Starts figuring out, and they are starting to figure it out. They, you know, they got nowhere to hide anymore. They were well, they still try to blame Bush and doing a good job of it, but after a while, that gets a little old too. When, when, yeah, when's the train leaving the station? All right, you've been there since January. and I'm proud to live in a nation that rewards risk takers. You know, it was 150 years ago that Oregonians founded this great state. And this state was not founded by people who were guaranteed that they'd have a home when they got here. It wasn't founded by people who were guaranteed that they'd have a, a health care when they got here. It wasn't founded by people who were guaranteed that the state would build roads for them and provide all kinds of services. It was, it was founded by people who put everything at risk and crossed the plains with no assurance from anyone that they would be successful. No promise of life, no promise of anything other than that they could make it on their own merit. And that's what's great about America. We need your collective voice. This is the most important battle that I have seen in my entire lifetime. And it may be the most important battle that we fight in our entire lifetime. This is about the future of this country. It's about whether or not we embrace economic fascism, where the government gets to choose winners and losers in the marketplace, or what some of you like to call socialism, but they're still gonna allow private ownership, they're just gonna dictate to you exactly what you do with it. It's either about that, or it's about allowing you the ability to fail or succeed on your own merit. And I believe in a nation established where people had the right to fail or succeed, based on their efforts and based on their willingness to take risks. And I want to continue to live in that nation. It's what made this the greatest nation in the earth, and it's the greatest experiment in human history. And I want to continue that experiment. And again, thank you very much for your time. This is so awesome. This is awesome to be here. Thank you so much. I just want to share with you today what is on my heart and why I'm here. I'm a mom, a wife, a ministry leader, and a business owner. Most people assume that I'm opposed to these taxes because I'm a business owner. We've been told by government that we should be willing to pay more, willing to sacrifice more for others and to pay our fair share. If these new taxes pass, we, like so many, will not only be paying more to the ever-increasing state budget, we'll be laying off employees. Well, in the words of Ronald Reagan, let me share with you that the greatest social program out there is a job. Yeah. 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 One thing I know for certain is that government does not create wealth or prosperity. It is only through prosperity that lives are changed and opportunities are born. It is through the opportunity for you to work, for you to earn, for you to profit, and for you to achieve that real freedom is acquired. I have a ton of compassion for those who are without, but I have even more compassion for you. The few of the millions that work so hard every day, you get up, you go to work, you send your kids to school, only to pay exorbitant taxes to an out of control government. And then you're called greedy for simply wanting to keep more of what you earned. Yeah. Stand that I have a desire to help those who need it. Have you ever asked yourself, is there any charity that's funded by the needy? No. Ask yourself these questions. If you and I are not allowed to prosper, who will give to charities, food pantries, soup kitchens, and recovery centers? How can we share what we aren't even allowed to keep? Who will give to those who so desperately need the generosity of the successful? If the government continues to penalize the successful, there simply won't be even a reason for you and I to work towards that success. 
Let me share with you that I have been so blessed to be a part of ministries and charities that do amazing work. I live in a small town and recently we were able to provide over 750 completely filled backpacks of school supplies, coats, and much more to needy children in our elementary schools. Our local church provides more food to the hungry in our town through our food pantry more than any other private agency. A McMinnville charity that's close to my heart, the See You Later Foundation, has raised over a half a million dollars to provide scholarships for needy people. This is in a small town, and those taxes come from profitable local businesses. How many more lives could you and I change just by being more generous and being able to keep more of what we earn? These are great causes that cannot happen without jobs. They cannot happen without income. They cannot happen without profits. And they cannot happen without business owners and capitalism. You and I must be adamant. We must work diligently to stop the demonization of the successful. We must work together to ensure opportunity for jobs and prosperity for all. You see, I have witnessed those with tremendous wealth give up so much to the least of these. And it is because of these examples that you will never convince me that money sacrificed to wasteful government spending does more good in the hands of government than in the hands of those who earn it. that they have been repeatedly asked. Tell them that they continually vote to raise taxes, that they have made statements that accuse concerned citizens of being terrorists. Second, hold them accountable. Ask them for an explanation or a defense. Why did you vote for this bill? Why won't you commit to reading bills? I would like an answer. And third, inform them of expectations. Say, we expect you to vote in the interests of Oregonians, not your party. Yeah. Things like, I expect you to read bills before voting on them. And fourth, explain the consequences. Tell them, this bill will force me to close my business and X amount of people will lose their job. If you do not do this, you will not be re-elected. In closing, in the words of Thomas Jefferson, when the people fear the government, when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. Thank you. Jeff, including me in this tea party this afternoon and evening as we wear on, and I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I have a few questions for you. I want to know about those, uh, for the folks who are registered to vote in the city of Portland, are you aware of the fact that we're recalling the mayor? <laughs> we're taking your signatures at these two tables over here, and I'd really appreciate it if you have uh, some time, if you haven't already signed it, to go over and sign it. Now I have another message for some of you this afternoon, this evening, and the message is, you folks from Acorn, you know who you are. Yeah. S-E-R-U, Obama's uh, political group, Organizing for America. Make sure you clocked in today so you can get your paycheck from your paymasters in Salem. Imagine that. Labor unions making their laborers work on Labor Day. For the rest of you, did anybody pay you to come out here today? No. No, didn't think so. Did anyone come to you and say, you must come to the tea party today? Did anybody ask you to stand up for what's right and tell you that they pay you for it? I didn't think so. Does anyone have to pay you to love your own country? I didn't think so. Hello folks. <laughs> 